Good evening and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories, Theo Mare. I missed today, yesterday, Friday, and so I'm going to be doing it today. I was traveling, which if you listen to my next um, posting, uh, you'll find out, find out where I went to. But I'm continuing right now the story of the young man from Mosul and the murdered girl. Now, you might remember that he had gone to Baghdad trading with his uncles, and his father had told his uncles not to take him to Cairo, even though they had all agreed that Cairo was just a place that you had to see before you died. But his father, for some reason, did not want him to go there. So instead, he had stayed in Baghdad, and he had taken the profits that he had made, he rented a house for two gold dirhams uh, per month. And remember, he had met this young woman who ended up coming over every three days and asked if she could bring her sister, who was even more beautiful than she was. And so he said, of course, and... Well, the younger sister ended up spending the night there at the man's house, and the older sister, the one that he was normally well, sharing time with, spent the night as well. And the young man had a beautiful night, and when he awakened in the morning, he was shocked to find the older sister, the one who he had been first enamored by, gone, and the younger sister, dead. He fell into a panic, as might any of us. He didn't know quite what to do next, what to do at all. Being a young man, not experienced really in the ways of the world, thinking quickly on his feet, he thought he must dispose of the body and get out of town. And so he went out into the outer courtyard and he took some of the stones up from the outer courtyard. They were large square marble stones and he took enough of them up where he could then dig into the earth. And using a shovel, he began to dig deeper and deeper into the earth, a hole. And here he took the young woman's body and he laid it in the hole, covered up with earth, put stones back on top. And very quickly he went to his landlord and he paid him for a few months of rent. Actually, I think he paid him for a whole year's worth of rent. And then he left. He locked the door and left. Well, he made his way to Cairo. And there he found his uncles and fell in with them. And the truth is his money had been running out. And so it, it was good that he fell in with his uncles so that he could be provided for through their generosity. And he was. Days rolled by. Their trading ended up going quite well. They spent months there after their trading was finished just to enjoy Cairo and all the sites that were there for them to enjoy that were like nowhere else they'd been. Well, during this time, our young man's monies ran out. And yes, he had squandered it on things that were unnecessary, but to him seemed enjoyable. And as he saw his money running out, he decided he would depart and go back to Baghdad, where at least he had a house to rent 
and perhaps he could find some kind of employment and regain some ability to take care of himself financially. And so he left and he didn't say anything to his uncles. He just left. Now his uncles came back and wondered where he had gone. And they just thought, uh, he must have decided to go home early. Um, we need to leave too, so we'll follow after him. And so his nine uncles packed up their things and off they began to trek for the way home to Mosul. Well, little day did they know that uh, their nephew had gone off back to Baghdad. And he arrived there and as mentioned before, his money was run out. They got to the house, he opened it up, and things seemed just completely normal and untouched. And he began just to make his way looking around his rooms. And as he did, he noticed a glint coming from underneath his bed. And when he looked more closely, he saw that it was this incredibly beautiful necklace. And he picked it up. It had beautiful stones within it. It was worth a great sum of money. And he thought, ah, this must have fallen off of the young woman who'd been murdered. And this brought back not the greatest of feelings for him, but he thought, this is a, a gift, a blessing. For if I sell this, I will certainly have plenty of money to last me for a very, very long time. And so he went into town and he went to one of the jewelers that was in town and he presented this bracelet to the jeweler. And the jeweler looked at him with questions in his eyes. The jeweler wondered where he'd gotten a necklace like this. And he thought certainly he must have stolen it. But he didn't say that. And what he said to the young man was, well, you know, this may look really, really precious, but you know, it's not pure gold. It's really made of brass and coated with gold. Will you take such and such a price for it? And the young man said, yes, I knew that. Sure, I'll take that. Well, at this point, the jeweler thought, this young man, he has no idea what he has here. And he most certainly has stole soul on it because if he knew what he had, he would not settle for such a small sum. And so the jeweler said for him to wait a minute. And he went into the back, leaving the necklace with the young man. And though the young man was somewhat apprehensive, he needed the, that money and he waited until the jeweler returned. We'll stop the story there. Find out what happens next. Okay, thanks for joining. Hope you have a good rest of your day. And find out tomorrow where I've traveled to. Or maybe you'll just watch this one after the other.